Hey, what's happening, YouTube? This is the We All Juggle Knives channel. Welcome to my review of this item. This is the Camillus, Camillus, Camtrax Axe. But it's really a hatchet, and it's got a hammer surface opposite the blade. It also has a 7-inch folding saw in the handle. So you see it's a synthetic handle, and then they have the hatchet head in there, kind of like a Fiskars hatchet. Right there is the saw, you got finger grooves. I will definitely be demonstrating the saw in this video. So the price on this, the lowest I found it for was $40, including shipping. All right, that's on Amazon, I will include a link. All right, so the hatchet head is stainless steel. I'm not sure what, this, what steel the saw is made out of, they do not say. And it has a titanium-based uh, bonded coating on both of those. And they don't say which stainless steel the hatchet head is made out of. Here is the sheath. It's probably one of those 3CR something type steels. All right, so you saw the belt clip and it has a retaining strap with snaps on both sides. Yeah, so ambidextrous retaining strap there. That's how you get it off. You know, be careful not to slice yourself, duh, as you uh, remove the sheath, but it snaps in and it holds it in like even even without that retaining strap, it holds it in. So it's a pretty nice molded belt sheath. All right, here is the saw. It has kind of like a lockback mechanism. You push that down and then there's a nail nick. And you know, I have no glove because it's very hard to, <laughs> to get that nail nick with a glove, so. But there it is, it locks into place, that is locked. It's a seven inch saw blade. And it's not the best saw, you know, when a saw folds out from the handle like that, I consider that like a backup rather than a primary folding saw. All right, doing things with a hatchet. Most of the rest of the video is going to consist of demonstration of this item, chopping up some yard debris. So now, this thing could really benefit from like regrinding. You know, when you get this, if you get this, you definitely want to customize the edge. Because it didn't really come that sharp. I mean, I'm not going... Alright, that, that branch was pretty brittle, so it killed that branch. But some of the other branches, I noticed, like, it took, like, two hits when it should have taken one. Like, if they had given this thing, like, a better edge and grind. So, like with many, you know, if you're going to buy a cheaper hatchet, you probably already know that, yes, you, um... You want to customize that edge a bit. Now, this is just how it came because I want you to know, like, what you're going to get out of the box. But yeah, keep in mind you might have to regrind it. All right, so that spike will symbolize a tent stake. This is the hammer part. Yeah, so it has a little hammer surface on the back with some texture to, uh, so it won't won't tend to slip. But it is kind of a thin, or should I say, narrow hammer surface. But it does do the job. Yes, da -na -na -na, hammer time. Remember that? Remember? Ah, you're too young. All right, so there, you know, there it is doing the hammer thing. I find the hammer backs useful. I mean, I like that better than the back spike simply because I've shredded so many, like, pants and, like, sides of my jacket with, with back spikes over the years. All right, so that was the hammer. All right, here is the human woodpecker again. Some sped up footage carving uh, a spear, actually. Not a spike this time, it's an actual spear, just because I was able to find a a semi-long branch to, to be the shaft of the spear. Right, so what I do is I carve the basic shape with a hatchet, and then I go ahead and just finish it with a small knife, just because it just makes sense. It's easier to get, like, the really, really pointy tip. Now, you also want to fire harden this, right? But I didn't because I had three different things to review in one freaking day and it gets dark early. But yeah, ideally you would fire harden your spear. Uh, here I am hunting. Yeah. Wouldn't you be shocked if I just like speared a freaking gazelle right there? Yeah, well, I can't. There's no gazelles, but just imagine those pieces of wood were like the rib cage of, of something. Yeah. That was mostly that was mostly for comic relief, by the way. All right, here is sawing things with the saw. Now, like I said, when you got a saw like this that's like stuck in the handle, it's more of a backup. 
because there's some really good saws. Like if you want to carry a dedicated folding saw, there are some much better saws and you, you know what those are. Most bushcrafters know which those are. So this is like in a pinch when you don't want to carry a separate saw. You think you might not need one, but then you need one. So as a, as a backup, as something in a pinch, it's fine. Now, when I saw through something, when I get like 90% through, I usually just break off the rest, right? So that is my, my philosophy on sawing, but this is the most exciting part of the video, I swear, I swear. And again, this is when your wife walks in. Are you watching some guy saw things in his backyard? Uh, and of course, you, you deny it, you deny it. You don't need more tools and hatchets and saws. Yes, you do. You it's cri hey, Christmas is coming up. You need this stuff. Come on. But yeah, there it is, and uh, it's all right. I mean, there's better. There, as I said, there's better saws, but those saws are not folded into the handle of your hatchet. You know what I mean? Actually, uh, there, there's uh, it's handiwork. You know, it strikes me that this thing is pretty much the. It's good for yard work because it can chop up branches and it'll chop a lot better when you reprofile it, but it can chop up branches and if you encounter a branch that's just too big for a little hatchet, that's where that's where the saw fits in. Like that saw is only there because, you know, sometimes you have to chop something that's too uh, uh too big in diameter for a little hatchet. All right, so the saw is all right. Those are all the pieces I sawed in half and if you look at like the ends of the pieces, you can you can get an idea of how cleanly you know the saw can saw through. All right, so as a backup saw, it's all right. All right, splitting, making kindling. Yeah, see, this isn't the best for that because that happens like because of the way that they put the hatchet head in there, which is kind of like the um, kind of like on my Fiskars hatchet too, right? It has that material of the handle that's like sticking out there. So if you don't split the wood absolutely cleanly, it'll get hung up, like if there's a knot. Now I was able to make all those pieces. As you see, they have a triangular cross section because I kind of just chipped them off like the, the sides of a large piece of firewood. So you can make some little kindling sticks, but it's really not the best for this. It's not good for splitting because if there's any knots whatsoever, it'll get hung up. All right, another thing about this saw. It, according to the instructions, there's two ways to hold the saw. You know, you can hold one hand or two hand on the handle itself with those handle grooves. But if you're sawing something that's like thicker, they recommend you hold back there like the, with the head as like a handle of the saw. Now make sure you have that sheath on the head because you don't want to slice yourself obviously, but yeah, that's how they say to use the saw. All right, final thoughts. Well, first let's talk about Camillus in general. They are a company that's had some problems. You know, I think they almost went bankrupt. They got purchased. Uh, currently, I believe they're owned by the Acme Corporation. At least that's what it said on the packaging of this. Some of their stuff is now again being made in the USA. Some of their knives are. Right now, this ha the hatchet is made in China, okay? But some of their other stuff is made in the USA. I've already reviewed this, the Camillus Bushcrafter, and they have the Trekkis multi-tool in the background. I've reviewed that too. I will include links to those two items and links to the reviews of those items. So they do make some good stuff. What are my final thoughts on this hatchet? All right, well, as I said, you want to sharpen it and maybe regrind it to make it perform to its peak. Uh, it is very light. I feel its best use is for yard work because what it's good at is chopping up branches and any branch that's too thick, you can use the saw. As I said, I feel the saw is a backup. It's not as good as uh, your primary dedicated folding saw that you might carry, but it's great if you don't want to carry an extra item. I don't really think it's that good for bushcraft. Like I said, it's more for camp, like camp or backyard maintenance, you know, yard work. That That's what I would say is the strength of this because 
Well, with that synthetic handle, it is lightweight, and the handle can take some abuse. I accidentally did some overstrikes, and I thought it would break when I was testing it, and no, it survived. So my final verdict, uh, for splitting wood, no. Uh, for bushcrafting, probably not. For backyard maintenance, Yes, I do recommend it uh, for that. Or if you need a very compact little camp hatchet, then yes. All right, so I will include all the relevant links as well as uh, links to competing items and maybe some hatchets that I like a little more for bushcraft. Check out those links. They do support the channel. This has been We All Juggle Knives. I'm out.